Hey guys, this is Simon from Fateless. Welcome to another mind-blowing video. We've got some really cool stuff to show you today. I'm going to be showing you how we build out a legendary champion going from concept right the way through to 3D. I'm going to show you one of our new environment settings. I'm going to show you a little kind of like, I guess, change to environments that you won't have seen in this genre before, uh, which is actually going to enable us to do some really cool stuff. And why don't we just kick off by showing you our archer here inside like a character viewer now. Still needs a bit of tweaking in terms of reflections and stuff, but we're getting somewhere. And we're starting to get some different animations in on the champions as well, like combat animations, death animations, <laughs> face plant, uh, and all sorts of stuff, yeah, run in between zones. So all of these things that we need to make a game an actual game rather than just a um, character viewer is starting to happen within the actual game engine, which is really exciting. Just before we get into this first legendary champion and the showcase here, a couple of things. Firstly, if you're one of the people that watches all of these videos on the Fateless channel, but has not yet subscribed, that's about 70% of you, please hit the subscribe button, it really helps our channel and helps YouTube spit out these videos to more people. We actually do a weekly podcast as well where we're talking about some of the different things that we're building in the game. So you should be checking those podcasts out as well if you're interested in this project. I want to thank everybody who's part of our Patreon right now. I'll link it down below. Everybody who's supported on a monthly basis on the Patreon, you're basically supporting us to bring in additional team members and basically improving our launch potential. Anyone who's a patron will also get uh, some of the, the exclusive merch goodies uh, and you'll get like a first listen or first see of some of the stuff we're doing in the community uh, potentially before it goes out anywhere else. And then lastly, I'm just going to call out our Discord. So we've got a Fateless Discord as well, which I'll link down below. Come and join us. We discuss all things this game, honestly. And, and we have some banter along the way as well. But if you've got ideas about uh, what boss abilities would be cool, or well, we've got a section for that. If you've got ideas around how we should be building this game, We've got a section for that. If you just want to come and hang out and play some poker once a month, we do that as well. So come and join the Discord as well. That would be awesome. So let's talk about building a legendary champion. We've got a really cool showcase for you here. So I guess it all starts off really with some concepts for what does this faction represent? Okay, so we're going to be talking about an Olympian today. We're going to talk about someone from the Olympus faction. It's going to be one of our legendary heroes that will very soon be in that engine that I showed you earlier. So we're talking about the Greek mythology and some of the things which we kind of like called out for Greek mythology. Core concepts, super heroic body proportions, beautiful, clean, iconic, sculptural physiques and costuming, aloof, disconnected, almost alien with their relationship to, to standard humanity, old world sensibilities, abstractions of their few key motifs, and then some context here, utopian environment type of stuff. And then we basically just said, avoid overly elaborate costumes. These need to be really like robust costumes, but not um, too, yeah, too fiddly, I guess. Avoid repeated shapes or patterns and avoid overly individual symmetry or asymmetry or expressive faces. So this is kind of like our, our overriding concept for this faction. We want everyone in a faction to have a feel to it. We want people to go into a faction and or see a hero, sorry, and think, yes, I know which faction that's going to belong to because I kind of understand that faction as a whole. So this is really important to us. So what we then do per faction is kind of draw out a mood board for magic media to work with. Yeah, so for the Olympus faction here, basically what we've done is we just look at different art styles from different games or just kind of like different concept artists on ArtStation, some sort of film all that type of stuff. And we're basically saying, well, what elements do we like? What type of materials do we want to see? You know, how do we make sure that we stay true to, to this theme, to this faction? I guess there's standards, if you like. And when the artists are then building the champion concepts, they're looking at some of these mood boards. They're looking at the kind of overriding direction that we've set. And they're saying, right, now we've got a good idea of what we can do in this type of faction. Yeah. We then get the first concept drawn up. We're going to look today at Leonidas. Yeah, so probably best known from the film 300. Okay, I know all of the guys that know before that, sure. But in terms of like known 
on a, a more of a global scale, that film really put this kind of image on the map. Yeah, so we've got this concept. We made sure that the, the kind of like the spear, but it's not called a spear, it's called something else. And shield kind of like stay true to the, to the original concept and his sword as well. And the kind of like general armor fits the theme. He's not a Spartan, he's Leonidas. So he needs to be able to like stand up above the normal soldier in the fight, right? So there's a few kind of elements to him which will allow him to stand out. That's, that's really important for us. We want to make sure that the legendary heroes do have that kind of like break from, yeah, like a normal, I suppose a common or a rare hero, okay? So this was the original concept. Basically at Fateless, we then either green light the concept or we give some feedback. Okay, and in terms of amendments we would like. Once it gets past that phase, we then go into a uh, line art. So the front view is already kind of like ticked off. We're then basically allowing the sculptors, the 3D artists, a visual in terms of a real simple line drawing of some of the elements they're going to have. And the way this works is kind of like molding clay. I'm actually going to get one of the 3D artists to do like a, a live recording of them doing the sculpting so that you can see it from literally start to finish, almost like a blob of clay. Imagine that, a blob of clay, which they're molding um, into these different designs. So they need things like these line arts so that they can see where the different kind of like breaks of design are. And the way they actually build it is they build the torso, they build the body first, and then they add elements on top, uh, which is super cool. It's actually really interesting to see. But you can see some of the sort of design, you can see some of the kind of, um, I guess, the interesting bits that you're going to see from, from behind. Because any hero we build, we want you to literally be going around at 3D saying, yeah, that's cool, really like this, really like um, some of the different design elements. Yeah, that's, I really appreciate the art side of these things. Like, I love it. I love it. So uh, I hope you guys do as well. We then look at some sort of more, uh, I guess, specific details, and we're looking at uh, different elements or, or different examples of you know, what the weaponry could be, shields could be literally just like google searching some of these things to find interesting versions of what exists and then basically just like using those as supporting work then it gets into the sexy part so we're using a system here called jira which tracks everything in fact don't tell fiction that i'm showing you this but basically every single bit of art we're and design we've got separate boards for and every single Hero, every single environment, all of it has got its own ticket, which is assigned to an artist or a design member of the team from Magic Media, and they own it. And then there's a, someone from the Fateless side who basically is constantly to and fro feedback uh, sessions. So what I want to show you is how this then progresses into 3D. So we've got here Walter as the artist, the 3D artist behind Leonidas, who is doing this work. So this was his day one blockout, which Honestly, it's phenomenal work. For one day, to get from a lump of clay into this, it's phenomenal work. So what he's done here, he's basically got the main structure together. He's got um, all of the kind of like basic line art built into to the different items that he's putting together. And at this point, again, as Fateless, we say, uh, hold on a minute, don't really like this, or it feels like he's missing this, or what, whatever. With this one, we were kind of like, full steam ahead. Brilliant, brilliant work. Like, really loved it. So we'll then kind of give a breakdown of what this means as a proxy mesh. And proxy mesh, really really what this is saying is, how many um, shapes are there to build this, this dude? By that, it, it's saying, how harsh is this going to be on your device? If you're doing this on, if you're playing a game on a phone or an iPad, it's like, well, you know, how much are we asking your device to do to have multiple heroes that, that are kind of this level of quality out there plus the boss plus the environment all of those things like all of them coming together how many okay and this ends up being a 40k tris which is around where we want to be for most of our designs um, you see some go over like 100k we just can't do it on a game that's going to be on multi-platform like if it was just pc fine no worries but that's not where we're at so he then goes into day two design and you're like well hold on a minute. is this the same it's not the same you start to see some more finite detailing coming in in all of the areas, honestly, in his helm, in his uh, like kilts, in his shield guards. Everything starts to get that next layer of detail. And again, we're just kind of like, right, is there anything that we need to change? Uh, in this instance, no. 
I did throw back a question. I was just like, well, when we actually are playing the game, fine. If there's two elements. You've got when he's in his character portrait screen, maybe he is standing in that pose. But when you're in battle, surely he's going to be holding his items. I was like, you know, is this the vibe we're going for? And, you know, we just kind of had that back and forth around what do we want to do? He then starts to go into some real detail on some of the unique items for uh, Leonidas here. So exactly how is this helm going to be? And, and basically he's molding these individual items, which are then kind of put on the 3D model. Yeah, so all of these are, are molded as individual pieces. Does mean that we can reuse more generic pieces on other heroes at times, like a maybe like a bracer, just recolor it and um, add some slight changes to it and then use it somewhere else. But also means that you can get some real cool levels of detail on the pieces as you're building them out. So you can see there the helm. You can see the shield guards here, really high levels of detail. Uh, you can see the kilt now starting to get some real levels of detail. Look at this. Like, it's phenomenal work. <laughs> I've got to say it. It is phenomenal work. Uh, and then we get kind of like an updated view again as, as those kind of pieces now to get start to put in. At this point, I'm like, put him in the game. He's ready. But Walter's like, now hold on a minute. I'm still going. And uh, yeah, starts to do more work, more refinements. Obviously starting to get to, to the real high quality level of detail here. You can see the muscles coming in in the back. You know, if you compare this to that first image that I showed, in terms of like the muscle structure now, we're really starting to see it come through. And then again, we start to see some of the other items. So the scabbard for his sword, the work now going into the, the helm with the, the like plume coming out. Look at the detail in on the neck. Honestly, it's, it's, it's disgusting how good it is. And then we get to uh, like the high poly model here. So we've now got the work on the cape. It's phenomenal work. It's phenomenal work. And uh, the next part from here is to basically put the colors through and then it's called baking it. And then you bake it into a full 3D render which then goes in game. Uh, as we saw earlier with the game version, I'll just close it down. With the game version, you can then obviously apply animations and all that type of stuff as well. Give them their weapon, etc. So I just thought I'd share it because I'm, I'm super psyched about this particular model. I think Walter's done a brilliant job. Uh, he's actually one of the newer 3D artists that's joined the Magic Media team on behalf of Fateless. And um, super cool work that's been going on this week. So I really wanted to show you how that process happens and you know, how we get from concept to a 3D model that, that we're actually gonna have in game real soon. A Couple other things to show you then. Let's talk a new environment. Okay, so we're talking Babylon here. What's really interesting about the concept and the work we're doing with Magic Media on campaign levels or, or any sort of dungeon levels in our game, we're actually building it in a modular way. So we're building almost, if you can imagine, Le Lego blocks that you can pick up and move and reposition. You will not find you're running through the exact same level over and over again when we get our game out. It won't happen. Okay, so what will happen is there'll be these kind of different bricks that we can move around. Uh, we could put different assets within the brickwork. And ultimately, every level will feel like you're running in a different level. So this is a new sort of Babylon scene. Obviously, there will be backdrops and that type of stuff. But we've got that kind of real... I mean, just look at the water effects. This is first pass. This is not finished finished model. This is first pass look at Babylon. Literally came through today. Yeah, so you can kind of see the vibe of the land. I've actually got a couple of 3D renders of, of how it's looking. And you can kind of get a better feel from this, that kind of like pick up and move it block. There'll be multiple blocks like this for Babylon, multiple blocks like this for, for all of our different environments. And we can kind of reposition them as we choose to, to make interesting levels. Also, if we wanted to do something cool like a boss rush, you know, like all of the different bosses in our game back to back to back to back in some sort of weird event thing we were going to do, we could actually pick up the blocks that we built for bosses and, and arrange them in a way that you're almost like running through a portal, a portal, a portal to take on the next boss. So it doesn't feel clunky and weird, but it feels very cool. And that would be relatively quick for us to do based on the way we're building the, the sort of fundamentals. So this is, again, it's, it's kind of unheard of in this genre, as far as I'm aware, but it does mean it gives us a lot more flexibility when it comes to the sort of final builds of our gameplay. Um, and again, this is first pass stuff, but I think it looks super cool. So look, one more sneak peek 
don't tell Dan, don't tell Fiction that I'm sharing this one because uh, I'm not supposed to. But there's something else which, which we want to bring into our game, and that is dynamic effects. Think about doing a really, really cool special move. Okay, let's, let's say you're unleashing an ultimate and it does a ton of damage. Imagine at the same time, some of the background crumbles away with the sheer force of impact of your hit. That's what we're able to create here. So we're creating our own assets. And with those, we're able to create um, the ability to crumble some of them. Not everything, but um, it could actually end up being, we're not going to do it everywhere because then it becomes like the norm. But actually, a nice little kind of like interactive mechanic when you unleash this unholy ult to just smack down statues in the background because you've, you've unleashed such a force. That's the type of vibe we're going for just to give our backgrounds, our campaign levels, just, just this kind of like feeling of immersion. Yeah, anyway, that's it from me. A few sneak peeks. Make sure you sub to the channel if you want to carry on uh, getting updates around Fateless. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I've been Simon. Catch you soon.